I do love you. And I can't imagine my life without you. I don't think I could live without you. <laughs> it was weird. It was like, um, I had this feeling a while ago, you know, that I'd lost you somehow. Really? I wonder why. I don't know. It was strange. Like I said, it was, it was like I lost time or something, you know, and during that time I lost you. It was horrible. Well, you're never going to lose me. No? No, I'm here for as long as you want me. Well, that'll be forever. I never want to lose you. Come on. Look who's oh. woken up from the night. Hey, honey, <laughs> did you sleep well? Of course she slept well. Did you miss me? <laughs> Yay. Hey. Oh, my God. 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 I have never seen him this happy. <sighs> Thank goodness for Endora's fantastic magic. <laughs> I'm still amazed she was able to turn back time like that. Uh, yes, and now Fox never has to know that I confessed no. to helping his mother break up my parents' marriage. Yeah, well, you dodged a bullet this time, lass, but do be careful next time. Endora may not be able to save your bacon. Oh, don't be such a downer. I just hope Alistair dies before he can tell Fox and everyone my secret. Yeah. I'm not the only one who has a secret, believe me. Come to us, uh, come to Papa. No, no, stop it, stop it. Now you start talking, you pig. <laughs> Teresa, please, we need to get Alistair to the hospital. No, not until he tells everyone what he knows about what Gwen and Rebecca did. Now, come on. Teresa, my grandfather needs to go to the hospital. Now, leave him alone. Nancy's right. We all want to know what Alistair's babbling about. But if he dies right here, we'll never know anything. Uh, Teresa, there'll be time to question Alistair when he's out of danger. Okay? Ethan, out of danger? But the, the old man was just trying to make out with me. Now, come on, Alistair, please. Tell them what you know. Tell them that it was Gwen and Rebecca who sent the information to the tablet about Ethan's true paternity. Now, come on, please, Alistair, please do this for me. You are insane. Crazier than a cucaracha on crack. of the one who could sing so sweet and i would fly on the wings of a bird i knew you would take me high as breathe in breathe out you me up alive you are the fire burning inside of me you are my passion for life I love you. Mm -hmm. I want to be with you forever. I love you too. I'll never leave you, I promise. No. Kay must be the last of the cockeyed optimists. She knows that spell I cast on Fox is going to break them up eventually. Ooh, let's adopt a ton of kids. Oh, I would love that. I always wanted a big family. Yeah, yeah me too. And after everything I saw at the mansion last night made me realize that, you know, what's really important, what matters most is finding the woman that you want to be with and building a family. Well, there's you and me and Maria. That's a good start, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we'll build a wonderful family. Ugh. All this sunshine and light, I think I'm going to throw up. Uh, you, Katie. Uh... Oh, it's my father. I'm not going to answer that. Oh, maybe you should. It could be about Alistair. Yeah, yeah, I guess I should find out if he's alive or not, huh? Who knows? Maybe he died. <laughs> <laughs> that would put Kay in the clear, wouldn't it, my little witchling? And, of course, we'd be free, too. Free of Grandfather Alistair's threats. So keep your fingers crossed. Yes. Dad, what's up? Did he die? Well, he's still unconscious. So he's talking. Well, he hasn't really said anything yet. I've been getting calls from the crane industries all over the world. Okay, well, uh, don't know what that has to do with me. He fired me, remember? 
Well, since he's incapacitated, I'm in charge and I'm rehiring you. I want you to go to the office and start putting out some fires. Really? I'm surprised the word got out so fast. Well, this kind of news spreads fast. It seems that the crane industry's stock is plummeting. We have to do something before there's a widespread panic. Yeah. Listen, uh, I want to talk to you about something. I'm actually thinking about a career change. You know, I'm starting to realize that money isn't the most important thing in the world. Fox, listen to me. We have to take care of this problem before this company is destroyed. I don't want to see that happen. Too many generations before us put their blood and sweat into building this company. We have to try to stabilize it for them and for future generations, if not for father. All right. Okay. You know what? You're right. I'll do it for you and I'll do it for them. All right? Thank you. I'll go to the hospital with father. I'll take calls from there. Well, let me know what happens to the old man, all right? I will. So Alistair's still alive? Yep, he's still alive. Oh, but he's, uh, he's still doing really, really poorly, apparently. Listen, my, uh, my father wants me to go by the office and put out some fires before the whole business world takes a nosedive because Alistair's in the hospital, so. Oh, yeah, go, I understand. Yeah? Yeah. I'm gonna leave my heart here with you to take care of, is that all right? Yeah, I'll guard it with my life. Okay. See you in a bit. Okay, I'll walk you out. Okay. Oh, gag me, gag me. Oh, not you two, Endora. Oh, fine, fine. I suppose we might as well let Kay enjoy the fantasy for as long as she can, because reality's going to come crashing down any minute and tear them apart for good. <laughs> no, 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 he's not going anywhere, not until he talks. No, no, can't you do something? She's going to kill him. Yeah, she's got good reason to. Teresa, stop this. Leave him alone. He has to get to a hospital now. He's suffered enough. If you listen to me, old man, and you listen to me good, I will contact the networks, I will contact the media, I will call the National Organization of Women and tell them exactly who you are. That you are a rapist. That you are a confessed murderer. I don't care if you do own all the judges in Harmony. I don't care if you own half of the press. Someone will print the story. Someone will carry the story on the news. And when they do, you will spend the rest of your life behind bars, Alistair. And that's if you don't die right here and right now. So tell them, tell everyone in this room the truth, what you know, that it was Gwen and Rebecca who sent the information to the tabloid about Ethan's true paternity. If you don't, I swear to you, I will strangle you right here and right now. All right, all right, that's enough. <laughs> you can't threaten a man's life like this. We're gonna have to take no, you no, in. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. I promised everyone I would talk. And now I will. Oh my God, Mother, this is it. It's over. That's good. Go on, tell him, Alistair. Tell Ethan the truth, that his wife has been lying through her teeth. Oh, no. Oh. no, you, this is no time for jokes, you hear me, Alistair? Wake up, let me go, wake up, come on, talk. There, the man is dying. Put his oxygen back. God, Grampy, don't die. He looks dead. Please tell us he's finally dead. <laughs> yes, I got it. Ah, uh, don't worry, sir. Mr. Fox Crane just walked in. I'll speak with him and get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, thanks. Fox, I'm so glad you're here. It has been insane since the word got out about your grandfather. Yeah, my father called me. You know, I got fired, right? And then my, my father rehired me, and I guess it's gonna stay that way until my grandfather wakes up and fires me again. <laughs> well, I'm happy to see that you're glad to be back. What? Oh, no, no, that's, that's not why I'm happy, Valerie. It's not why I'm happy. No? No. Yeah. Well, then is it because your grandfather might die? No, it's not that either, although that would bring a big smile to my face. And then what's with the big, goofy grin? Well, it's the oldest reason in the book, as silly as it may sound. <laughs> Valerie, I'm in love. Honest to goodness, utter love. In love? Yes. Let me tell you something. 
really important, actually. I just realized this today. Love is really the only thing that matters in this world. And I also realized that Kay is my one and only true love, and now I know what I have to do. You know, there was a time I thought that this was more important, but I was wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. The only thing that I really care about now is building a family with Kay and Maria. Oh, he loves me. He wants us to be a family. Oh. Well, that's not news, dear. He's told you that before. Yeah, but not like this. Maria! Come here. Come with me, honey. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if Fox were your daddy? Oh. Yet, I'm afraid to hope for it. I mean, you know, being a single mom can make you feel hopeless sometimes. Like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. But now I see the light, and it's Fox. Maybe it's the light of a train speeding down the tunnel towards you, huh? Oh, you can't spoil my happiness, no matter what you say. Ugh, oh, he is so, he's so wonderful. I mean, to find a man with so much money. Yeah, if Alistair dies, he'll be able to finagle some money out of that estate, all right. No, I was not talking about money. I meant with so much love to give. He's got such a, a great heart. Uh, such wonderful love. Oh, wonderful, <sighs> wonderful. I don't want to be a downer, Kay, but you're ignoring reality here. You know that the spell I cast on Fox to make him successful is going to break you two up eventually. Yeah, well, I don't want to talk about that. Not right now. Would you just let me be happy just a little bit, please? Ah, oh, I'm finally really starting to believe in happy ever after. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Not all fairy tales end happily ever after. Come on, Dr. Russell, tell me that he's not dead. I need him alive so that he can tell the truth. Is he dead, Dr. Russell? No, he's not dead. Oh, thank you, God. Did he have a heart attack, Eve? Yeah, it would appear so. His heart beats erratic. We need to get him to OR and close up this knife wound. Are we ready to go? I'm coming with you. No, he's not going anywhere, not until he talks. Teresa, it's enough. Back off. Oh. Oh. No. <laughs> Dr. Russell, what are his chances? You know, until we get him to the hospital, anything can happen. But for right now, he's alive. OK, thank you. You see, he's probably going to be all right. Is that what Dr. Russell said? Yeah, she said that he's not dying yet. Listen, why don't we get out of here, OK? We can forget about this whole nightmare for a while. No, I want to go to the hospital with Grampy. I'm afraid to leave him alone. He's not going to be alone. Dr. Russell's going to be with him the whole time. That's supposed to make me feel better? Eve wants him to die just as much as everyone else. Fancy, she is a doctor, OK? And a damn good one, all right? She's going to do everything she can to save his life. I'm afraid to be away from him. Listen, we'll give the hospital your cell phone number, OK? If anything happens that you need to be there for, They'll call you. Come on, don't you want a little alone time with me? Uh, yes. <laughs> Good. Now the police want to question everybody before anyone can leave. Yes, I know. All right, so I'm going to tell them that we want to go first so that we can get out of here. You know, Gwen, if you think you're home free, you can think again. Because we're all going to go to the hospital. Alistair's going to come, too. He's going to tell everyone what you and your mother did, and you're going to be there to face it. You're crazy. Get away from me. Are you afraid to go to the hospital? No, I'm not afraid of anything, Teresa. I have nothing to hide. Right. right. So you're going to come with us, then? With you and Alistair? No, with me and Ethan. What in the world makes you think that Ethan's going to go to the hospital? He could care less whether Alistair lives or dies. Yeah, but, uh... You care, right? Your whole life depends on it. So are you going to go to the hospital to find out if you're safe or not? You are my passion for life. Oh, I'm glad we came. This looks like the perfect day to go ice skating and the perfect way to get our mind off all the craziness. 
I hope so. I'm still so worried about Grampy. Hey, look, Dr. Russell knows we're only five minutes away if anything happens to him. I know, but I just don't feel right being here. I'm sorry, Noah, but I want to go to the hospital. Listen, Fancy, he's going to be fine, OK? And you really need to get over this attachment you have with your grandfather. Don't tell me what to do. If I want to go to the hospital, I will. And you can't stop me. Pilar, the officer asked me to send you into the library. Oh, okay. Thank you, Gwen. OK. So are they through with you? Yeah, I answered all the questions, and they're finished. Yeah, they're, they're through with me, too. OK. So you guys are going to come to the hospital? I told you already, I have no intention of going to the hospital. Why don't you ask your wife what she's so afraid of? Teresa, I am not afraid of anything. I just don't care whether Alistair lives or dies. I think <clears throat> you do care, Gwen. All right, stop. Listen. If Alistair has something to say, there'll be plenty of time for him to say it after he's recovered from his wound. Ethan, I've, uh, I've been getting messages from all over the world. They've heard about Alistair's condition. The Crane affiliates are in a state of panic. What do we do? I've already sent Fox to the office. I think you and I should go to the hospital. We can field calls from there. We'll keep everyone calm by saying we're three feet away from Alistair and he's recovering. What if he's not recovering? Until he's dead. He's officially recovering. So I guess, um, Gwen, you can, uh, you can stay here and I can go to the hospital with you then. I can't wait to see the look on your face when you find out that it was Gwen and Rebecca who sent the information to the tabloid revealing your true paternity and that Gwen was actually the one who ruined your life and then set me up for it. Okay, if you think I'm gonna leave you alone with Ethan so you can fill his head with lies, you're crazy. Listen, honey, don't worry. There's nothing Alistair can say that would make me believe that you did anything wrong. Well, thank you for believing me. You're my wife. I will believe you. But I do think I'm gonna come to the hospital with you anyway. Maybe I can help. Fine. I'm getting my briefcase. Okay. Stick a fork in you, Gwen. You are done. You heard what my husband just said. He believes me. Yeah, but you know, I just kind of have a strange feeling that he's probably gonna change his mind once he hears the truth. Yeah, that's assuming that Alistair comes out of this alive. Oh, he's gonna live long enough to talk, trust me. And you? You're going to lose Ethan forever. Oh, God. We just seem to pray that Alistair dies, and then he takes our secret with him to his grave. Well, I'm glad that you're happy, but we've got a big problem to tackle right now. All these affiliates are threatening to dump their stock if something's not done to correct the downward slide. Huh. Imagine that. Let me ask you a question, Valerie. Have you ever been in love? It's rather amazing, actually, how your brain just it shuts off everything else, like it doesn't matter, you know? No, I can't say that I do, Fox. Hmm. Now, look, if you'll handle those files, I'll take care of these, and I call Chad to come in and help, too. Chad. Oh, Chad, yes. Well, I thought he got fired, too. Maybe, I'm not sure. Huh. I just figured we could use as much help as we could get, and he seemed willing. It's good thinking, Valerie. It's good thinking. I'm sure between the two of you, you can handle anything that comes our way. You know, I'm just not really concentrating very well right now. Fox, please, your father's depending on you. Uh. <laughs> Yes, this is Valley. I know I'm working on it. Tell Mr. Chin I'll get back to him as soon as I can. <sighs> Box, what am I supposed to tell the Hong Kong office? Hmm. It's a good question. You ask my father, he'll probably have the answer for you. Do you want to see this business go down the toilet? No! No, no, not at all. You know, just, uh... Look, Valerie, you're competent. You can, you can, you can handle things, and you and my father, will, you'll be fine. And what are you going to do? I'm gonna make a phone call. Very important phone call. Could change my life forever. Ooh, uh, I really feel like my life has just turned around. I finally think that I'm gonna have that fairy tale ending and be happy. At the risk of being repetitive, I really hate to see you get your hopes up like this, Kate. Yeah, well, I can't help it. I am hopeful. I mean, I love this little girl, oh, with all of my heart, and I wouldn't trade her for anything. But you know, Tabitha, it's, it's hard. It is really hard being a single mom with no dad around. Oh, yes, yes, I know. But I chose to raise Indora without a father, as you know. 
Yeah, well, if I could do it over, I probably would have waited to have Maria until I had a good, loving man like Fox to be her father. <laughs> well, I could have told you that was a good idea before you made lovely little Maria with Miguel. It is amazing how different I feel. I mean, I was so in love with Miguel. But he never loved me, so... You don't say. I don't know. I mean, we were best buddies growing up. I guess I just always thought that we would wind up together. Married, having a family and stuff. But then you really grew up and he fell for that dreary cousin Charity. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? I don't know why I blamed her. Because it was obvious that Miguel and I weren't going to work out together. I mean, we didn't feel the same things that Fox and I feel for each other. It's totally different. What's that? I don't know. It sounds like someone's kicking the bucket doors. What the heck? Apparently, we're being given a message. Special delivery. Oh dear. What? I hate to be the one to stick a pin in your bubble of love, Kay, but it seems you've forgotten something. Oh, you mean the shadow that fell on Fox and me at our wedding? The wedding we're supposed to have. Bowl's giving you a glimpse of your future, and I'm afraid it's not a very bright future. Yeah, but it has to be, Tabitha. We have to figure out a way to stop whatever it is that's trying to ruin things for me. Hey, you girls have fun. Okay, Tabitha, we have got to stop this, this evil cloud or shadow or whatever it is from ruining my relationship with Fox. I don't know if that's going to be possible, dear. Okay, is this because of that spell you cast? I thought I had some time before it worked. I even thought that our love was strong enough to overcome it. Well, at least that's what I wished. <sighs> if wishes were horses, beggars would ride. And I might say there's a perverse side of me that wished you might be right, despite the fact that I'm a witch and my main purpose in life is to defeat love. Oh, alas, alack, look at this. What now? Looks to me as if it's not going to be a something that's going to ruin your day at the altar, but it's going to be a someone. What? Oh my God, Tabitha, you're right. It's a it's a person who's going to ruin my relationship with Fox. But who is it? God, who could it be? Your mother ordered me to take you away from Kay. But how am I supposed to do that when you're acting like a lovesick puppy? Oh, well. What happened to the phone call that was going to change your life forever? The line was busy, Valerie, so I'm going to have to call back. It'll be fine. Pops, are you OK? Yes, I'm great. I've never felt better in my entire life. OK, well, then why are we dancing when the company's in crisis? We are celebrating, Valerie. We are celebrating. Celebrating a crisis? No, no. We're celebrating my newly found happiness. Look at my face. Huh? Have you ever seen me this happy? No, I can't say that I have. The answer is no, you have not. And I know this because I've never been this happy. And once I make that phone call, it's going to guarantee my happiness for the rest of my life. <laughs> Look, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, okay? Look, if you want to go to the hospital to be near your grandfather, then I will take you there. I just thought that I could protect you from all of the craziness that's going on. Come on, I'll take you to the hospital. No, wait, I'm... I'm sorry, you know what? I didn't mean to snap at you. It's okay. No, it's not. You're so sweet, trying to help me, trying to be nice. I'm a beast. 
You're not a beast. Come on, you're beautiful. I'm behaving so badly. I'm sorry, I know Grampy is in good hands. Let's stay and go skating. Are you sure? I'm sure. You're right. You need to spend some time alone. Just relax and have fun. Okay. Well, let's go get some skates. Okay. God, he's a tough old bird. It's amazing that he's even alive after everything he's been through. If he can just recover from the heart attack. See, uh, old goat awake can he talk us. We need answers, so we need them now. Teresa, what the hell are you doing here? Get out! No, I I'm not leaving. Not until Alistair talks. This man just came out of surgery. Please, would you all leave, and I will come out. I will update you on his condition shortly, okay? Oh, my God. His eyes are open. What? Look, Dr. Russell, Alistair's eyes are open. That means that he can talk. He can tell Ethan how Gwen and Rebecca ruined his life. Thank you, Noah. I needed this. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. How do you know? Fancy crane. I know you a lot better than you think. <laughs> Are you cold? No. No, I, I just suddenly had the weirdest feeling as if someone was watching us. Um, I don't think anybody's watching us. You don't? No. Why would anyone watch the two of us? Yes, I'm looking for a Senor Pacelli. As soon as I hear anything new about Mr. Crane, I'll let you know. No, there's no reason to panic, I assure you. I'll call you back. Ciao. Yes, uh, listen, this is Fox Crane. I'm in my office. Can you please call me back as soon as you can? Thank you very much. Uh, Fox, was that the Peruvian office? They called five times earlier and needed a call back. Right, that's right. Uh, no, no, uh, this was the personal phone call that I've been trying to make. I left a voicemail. They'll call back. Well, could you call the Peruvian office? They've got people practically jumping out of buildings. It's kind of amazing, isn't it? One guy goes to the hospital and everybody loses their mind. Fox, you must not understand the gravity of this situation. Every crane industry's office around the world is terrified that without Alistair, their holdings are worthless. <sighs> Well, they're wrong, right? I mean, my, my father is perfectly capable of handling things. Plus, with you by his side, I mean, come on, you're the most competent woman that I know. Really? Thanks. Yeah, don't mention it. Do you have any idea how happy I am? It's amazing. It's, it's like when you find the right person, every moment, every single one, happiest moment of your life. Well, I'm surprised you're not jumping up and down on Oprah's sofa. You sound like a paperback romance novel. Do I? I feel like I'm in a paperback romance novel, so my novel would be called Kay Bennett, Joy of My Life. Yeah, there is definitely a person behind the shadow over us, but I, I just can't tell who it is. Neither can I. Well, how am I supposed to stop them from ruining my relationship if I can't see them? Well, maybe the shadow will clear up, and then, and then we'll be able to see who it is. No, no, all I see is that hand with the brown glove. Is that a man or a woman? I just, I can't tell. Well, we have got to get rid of him or her or whoever it is, period. You've got to cast another spell. I beg your pardon. You don't just snap your fingers every time you want help from the dark side. 
First, you begged me to cast a spell that would make Fox successful in business. And then you begged me to reverse that spell. And then you changed your mind again, and you wanted that spell reversed. And then you wanted a spell that would turn back time so Fox wouldn't know that you'd been in cahoots with his mother to ruin your parents' marriage. Yeah, well, and Dora did that one. You didn't even have to work. But that isn't the point, Kay, don't you see? Magic doesn't just simply float away into nothing. It's in the ether. All your spells have, have surrounded us with a sort of magical smog. If all these spells get all mixed up, who knows what could happen? We could be in a terrible predicament. Yeah, well, I'll take my chances. You have to cast another spell to get rid of this threat, please. Please help me. I'll owe you big time. You already owe me big time. Well, I'll owe you some more. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll clean the house. I'll do the dishes. You massage my neck? Yes. You massage my feet? Yes, I'll do whatever you want me to do. Please. Oh, dear. I think I'm losing my mind. Oh, thank you, thank you. All right, Kate, now. I will try, but don't get your hopes up. Okay, okay, I won't. Just do your best. Right, I'm, I'm going to need Indora for this. All right, Indora. Magic time, magic time. Now I need you to concentrate, all right? You and Mummy are going to try and cast a spell to chase that nasty dark shadow away, all right? Here we go. Love of all ages. Love strong as a rock. Protect Kay and Fox. Don't let them get socked. Don't let them get socked? What kind of a spell is that? Look, I'm ad living here. Will you give me a break, okay, please? Okay, okay, okay. Just make it work. Here we go, sweet pea. Here we go. <laughs> Teresa, please, you're acting crazy. Let Eve tend to her patient. You know, for once, I am in agreement with you, Pilar. She is crazy. Look, I'm not leaving. Dr. Russell, please, OK? You can see that Alistair's eyes are open. I mean, surely he can talk to us. I want you to leave. Everyone, please leave. I will examine Alistair. And then I will come out and let you know whether he can talk or not. OK, please. Now, Teresa. Julian, please help me. Of course. Teresa. Mom, no, I can't. My, my life depends Teresa. on this. Teresa, let's go. Right now. What is wrong with that woman, Dr. Russell? It's a very long and a very sad story. But right now, we need to establish if this patient is really awake. His eyes are open, doctor, but he doesn't seem to be responsive. Alistair. Alistair, can you hear me? Alistair, speak to me. It's Eve. Speak to me. Just imagining things, Vance. You're right. You're right. I probably am. <laughs> Why would anyone be watching us? <sighs> Look, Fancy, you're just a little jump, which is okay. I mean, someone just stabbed your grandfather, and, and we still don't know who it is. Yeah, that's got to be it. Forget I said anything. Come on. <laughs> if you can catch me. <laughs> I know why someone might be watching us. If I'm right, we're in a lot of danger. Noah! <laughs> okay, great. And you realize you're the only one that can help me on this. You're the only person. Yeah. Wonderful. Perfect. So, uh, can you be in my office in, uh, say, an hour? Hour's time? Beautiful. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. It's just unbelievable. Perfect. Everything's working out. Fox, who are you calling? Who's the only person that can help you? 
Help you what? Oh, you'll see, Valerie. You'll see. My life is about to completely and utterly change for the better. Well, did the spell work? We tried our best, but I'm not sure. You better look in the bowl and see. Okay. Please. Let me see facts of me getting married without the shadow of that person hovering over us. If I don't see it, that means the spell worked, and Fox and I will be happily married someday. An MRI, an ultrasound, a complete pad test, another full blood panel. Right away, doctor. Well, I guess I better let them know what's going on. Can't believe it's come down to this. Okay, we cannot let that bitch expose us. No. No, we have to find some way to get into Alistair's room undetected. Okay, and then we are gonna rip those tubes from his body. It is time for the old man to die right now. Um, don't you think you even can see how nervous you two are? You're losing it. Can Alistair talk? Please, Teresa. I promise I would come out and update everyone on Alistair's condition. <clears throat> That's what I'm here to do. Okay. So how's my father, Eve? Well, I have some good news and, and I have some bad news. Good news! That means he can talk. That means he can tell Ethan exactly what Gwen and Rebecca did, right? And that means there can't be any bad news. Ask the woman that I love to marry me. You have to turn Fox down should he propose marriage to you. What if I told you that I had a way to keep Teresa away from you for good? Imagine. What's going on? You're at the Golden Globes and about to hit the red carpet. It's live and the whole world is